So now that we've tipped our representative sample from our pile onto a sheet of the thickest builder's plastic you can find, and that'll protect it from potential contaminants from the surface, all right, keep a nice clean sample. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the coning and quartering method to mix together the materials, all the increment samples we've taken from the sampling sites on that pile or windrow. We're going to mix them together thoroughly and we're going to extract a composite subsample so as we have a sample for test that's representative of the pile. Now the method, the method is it's a little bit elaborate but we need to have a stepwise method to make sure that we have something that can be checked and implemented effectively and consistently. So effectively what we have is we've dumped it into a pile but it's not mixed at this point. We're digging into the center of the pile, lifting and tipping it on top of the peak. So it's cascading all around. And we're working around the pile that way, digging into the middle, lifting and turning, topping right onto the top of the peak. So as to effectively mix and homogenize the materials. And we're working away around the pile at least two full rotations. Digging right into the center each time. What we end up with is we end up with a cone-shaped pile, which is where the coning and quartering concept comes from. Right? What we're doing there is we're dividing that with the spade into quarters. So if we take this quarter away and remove it out of the way, and we take this quarter away and remove it out of the way. What it does is it helps us to avoid unintentional bias on the basis of particle size or color or whatever. And it means that we're working in a methodical way to again maintain a nice consistently representative mixture of the pile as a whole. That's what we want to spend our money on when we send a test off for um, analysis. The analysis is expensive at a laboratory. We want to make sure that what we're sending in is representative of what's in that pile out in the yard. That's what enables us to provide recommendations to our customers on the relevant uses for that product, the most appropriate uses for that product that will deliver them performance in horticulture, in urban landscaping, in agriculture. Right. So now we have a reduced composite sample that is of a quantity that's suitable for us to send to the lab. And the two quarters that we've taken out that's the sample that we can retain on site as our backup sample. So if we get a result, we've got a second duplicate sample that we can send off to have reanalyzed if we get an aberration in our result. So into the bucket that goes and it'll be packaged up and sent to the lab for analysis. And in the meantime, we need to store and keep that in a way such that the product won't be degraded whilst it's either awaiting collection or in transit to the lab. Something in the order of 10 litres is plenty of product for a sample to send to the lab for the entire suite of testing through the Australian standard but also through whatever the relevant land application guidelines are which cover heavy metals, organochlorines, pops and so on. But we want to make sure it's a representative sample so we're not wasting our money. So you can better support your customers in your recommendations about the attributes of this product and how it's appropriately applied.